The Porsche 911 has finally been transformed into a hybrid, but this is far from a mere token effort. Unlike many hybrid systems designed just to exploit tax benefits, Porsche's approach is unique and innovative. Acknowledging the need to reduce emissions, Porsche hasn't settled for a standard hybrid setup seen in many other cars. Instead, they've taken a cue from Formula 1 teams, enhancing their vehicles within regulatory limits to boost performance. Their hybrid system not only cuts emissions, meeting regulatory requirements, but also delivers increasing power, instant throttle response, and even more refined driving experience. Additionally, the entire 911 lineup has received numerous upgrades. Some of these enhancements could lead to a new Turbo S model that may be the fastest and the most powerful 911 ever produced. Alongside developing the new hybrid system, Porsche has also given the 911 range a comprehensive facelift. Don't expect anything too drastic, as altering the classic design of a 911 would be like changing the shape of a pretzel, its iconic and best left untouched. However, you will notice some significant updates, especially at the front. The new LED matrix headlights replace the old car's horizontal fog lights, and the bumper is entirely redesigned. Instead of horizontal bars, there are now five vertical fins on each side, reminiscent of fish gills. These fins aren't just for show, they open and close to regulate cooling. Usually, they stay close to improve aerodynamics but when open, the radiators need more air. There are also new movable flaps under the floor to manage airflow, though these are only noticeable during a service or if the car is on a lift. To distinguish the new 911 from their previous model, look for new alloy wheels which range from 90 to 21 inches and include options with carbon fiber inserts to reduce drag. These are essentially the most luxurious hubcaps you'll find. But that's not all. Porsche has also refined the rear light bar, giving the car an even wider appearance, not that it needed it. There are new vents behind the rear windscreen, and the rear bumper and exhaust system had been upgraded as well. The exhaust pipes are now positioned closer together, enhancing the car's GT vibe, which is always a positive. Additionally, an optional aero kit is available for some models, featuring a fixed rear wing. As with most 911 updates, these latest versions tend to look even better than their predecessors. What do you think? Do you agree that the new 99.2 looks better than the old 99.21? Let me know in the comments. The most important feature of the new 911-992.2 generation is its hybrid system introduced on the GTS model. Porsche refers to this as hybrid system and you'll soon see why. This system is primarily developed to meet emission targets, with its key component being the electric turbocharger. So how does it work? When you're cruising, you don't need extra boost from the turbo, so Porsche developed a method using the turbine wheel inside the turbo to control the speed of exhaust gases moving through the catalytic converter. By slowing down these gases, the catalytic converters stay cooler for longer, improving their efficiency and reducing emissions. Traditionally, catalytic converters are cooled by making the engine run slightly richer, but this reduces fuel economy and increases hydrocarbon emissions. Porsche's new method reduces both fuel consumption and emissions. It gets even better. When the turbine acts as a windbreak to slow the exhaust flow through the catalytic converters, it spins around and Porsche has connected it to a generator. This generator turns the waste energy into electricity which can power a motor that instantly spins the turbo compressor to deliver immediate boost when you floor the accelerator. This new electric hybrid turbo is so effective that Porsche only needs one turbocharger for the new engine, replacing two turbos in the old 992.1 model. It doesn't require a huge battery to power it either, just a 1.9 kWh battery about the size of a standard 12V car battery. Despite its small size, it's powerful enough to run a second electric motor inside the gearbox, adding extra 56 horsepower and 150 Nm of torque to fill in any gaps. The motor in the new hybrid system can't drive the car on its own like some hybrids, so you can cruise in electric-only mode. Instead, it assists the engine during acceleration. This isn't the only upgrade Porsche has made to the new GTS-T hybrid. They've also replaced the old GTS's 3.0-liter flat-six engine with a new crankshaft, resulting in a 3.6-liter flat-six single-turbo unit instead of the previous 3.0-liter twin-turbo unit. 
So, how much power are we talking about? The new hybrid engine produces 541 horsepower and 610 newton meter of torque, which is 61 horsepower and 40 newton meter more than the previous model. How does this affect the new GTS's performance? The four-wheel drive version can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3 seconds flat. The top speed has also increased from 193 miles per hour to 194 miles per hour. So when will other 911s get these upgrades? Porsche hasn't made any official announcement yet, but they've been working on hybrid prototypes based on the previous 992 Turbo for years. If you look closely at the test cars, you can even see the Turbo S logo on the front air dam. This hints that Porsche might be developing a new Turbo S hybrid. Now, this model combines the current Turbo S's 650 horsepower engine with a 56 horsepower electric motor. It could exceed 700 horsepower, surpassing the 991 GT2 RS, one of the most extreme cars ever made. In addition to powering the electric motor and turbo, Porsche's new hybrid system also runs the new active anti-roll system. This system uses hydraulic and electrical actuators to adjust the car's anti-roll rates mid-corner, reducing body lean in fast corners. The GTS now comes with four-wheel steering as standard, enhancing responsiveness in tight, low-speed turns, and stability at higher speeds. Despite the added weight of the hybrid components, Porsche has kept it minimal. The new GTS T hybrid only weighs 50 kg more than the old model, and this slight increase in weight is offset by the improved performance. This is evidenced by the new GTS T hybrid's Nurburgring lap time of 7 minutes and 16.9 seconds, which is 8.7 seconds faster than the previous GTS. The new GTS hybrid isn't the only 911 to receive upgrades. The standard Carrera has also been enhanced. The latest 99.2 version retains the same basic 3.0 liter flat 6 engine as the previous Carrera but now features new turbo source from the old GTS model. Porsche has also fitted new intercoolers from the 911 Turbo to the new Carrera. How much more power does this add? You might expect a significant increase, but the new Carrera only gains 9 horsepower, bringing the total to 394 horsepower. Torque remains unchanged at 450 newton meters. Performance has slightly improved, with the new Carrera accelerating from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds or 3.9 seconds with the optional Sport Chrono Pack, which is a tenth of a second quicker than the old model. The top speed is also marginally higher at 183 miles per hour, just one mile per hour faster than before. Beyond engine upgrades, Porsche has revamped their car's interior, though opinions on these changes might be mixed. The most notable upgrade is the fully digital driver's display, replacing the iconic analog central wrap counter. While some might miss the classic look, the digital display offers various graphic layouts, including one with a digital wrap counter in the center and another with wrap counter slightly tilted, resembling racing cars for easier gear changes. From a practical standpoint, you can now mirror your phone through the 13-inch display in addition to the central touchscreen. However, the quirky twist key starter has been replaced by a standard starter button, losing a unique touch of the 911. Additionally, you can opt to remove the back seats at no cost, though many would argue that the back seats are one of the defining features of the Porsche 911, making it a practical sports car for carrying kids or giving a friend a lift. The new Porsche 911 99.2 is now on sale, with the entry-level Carrera starting at $99,800. This price is just under the $100,000 mark, which seems intentional. This is for the coupe with the standard PDK automatic gearbox and rear-wheel drive, costing about $2,800 more than the old model. The GTS, however, is more expensive, starting at $132,600 for the coupe with rear-wheel drive and a PDK automatic gearbox. This is $1,600 more than the old entry-level GTS without the hybrid system. Despite the price increase, the new GTS Hybrid is $26,500 less than the old 911 Turbo, which had only about 4 more horsepower. However, the Turbo comes with a standard 4-wheel drive, while the 4-wheel drive option for the GTS costs extra. The Carrera is not available with 4-wheel drive but both the Carrera and the new GTS can be had as convertibles, and the GTS is also available as a Targa. The first 992.2 Carreras will be delivered in Europe in late summer and the GTS-T hybrid should start arriving towards the end of the year.
And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.